एट्रियल फिब्रिलेशन मीन्स द अपर चेंबर्स ऑफ द हार्ट दीज अपर चेंबर्स ऑफ द हार्ट स्टार्ट बीटिंग खेओटिकली क्वाइट इरेग्युलरली दैट इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड एज एट्रियल फिब्रिलेशन नॉर्मली ए हार्ट बीट्स अराउंड सिक्सटी टू हंड्रेड टाइम्स पर मिनिट सो द the number of beats a heart should beat is determined by the sinus node and its function but at times when there is an enlargement of the atria or sometimes there is an infection or inflammation of the atria what happens is these atria start beating chaotically so this chaotic beating of the of the atria is called atrial fibrillation in this atrial fibrillation in contrast to the 60 to 100 beats per minute of the atrial contraction here the atrial rate is between 400 to 600 per minute so the atria start beating very fast and quite irregularly so if the atria beat very fast and irregularly what does it mean what means that if a, if a structure is beating at 400 to 600 per minute the the beating is quite ineffective so that is what we call as the atrial paralysis or the atria is not effectively functioning so atrial fibrillation leads to dysfunction of the atrium and this atrium contributes to about 20% of the heart output so when the atrium is dysfunctional the heart pumping is reduced by around 20% atrial fibrillation can be either sudden in onset or chronic or paroxysmal so for a fundamental understanding there are three types of atrial fibrillation sometimes it happens suddenly like in the scenario of an acute heart attack or in the scenario of a inflammation of the pericardium or sometimes uh, when there is a sudden pulmonary embolism that means there is a blood clot within the uh, blood vessel supplying the lungs in those circumstances there can be a sudden onset of atrial fibrillation so this is called an acute atrial fibrillation so once after the cause for the atrial fibrillation has been reversed there is a strong chance that this atrial fibrillation can revert back to the normal sinus so the the atrium will start contracting at a much lower rate the other type of an atrial fibrillation is a chronic atrial fibrillation or a chronic persistent atrial fibrillation where the atrial fibrillation is present for more than a week in duration and continues to persist so that means the atrial fibrillation does not come back to sinus rhythm but in fact is present for beyond a week and continue to remain so for the rest of the life so that is what we call as the chronic atrial fibrillation or a long standing atrial fibrillation there is another type of atrial fibrillation called the paroxysmal atrial fibrillation that means the atrial fibrillation is present for a certain duration of the time and then reverts back to the sinus rhythm and once again might come up again it comes and goes that is what we call as the paroxysmal atrial fibrillation now you might ask me which type of atrial fibrillation is dangerous all types of atrial fibrillation are dangerous why they are dangerous atrial fibrillation as we understood reduces the pumping ability of the heart by 20% in addition a prolonged and fast rate of the heart fatigues the heart and reduces the heart pumping ability again that is called left ventricular dysfunction but the most dreaded complication of atrial fibrillation is because is the brain stroke because the atria are chaotically contracting or they are inefficiently contracting there is pooling of blood within the atrium and this pooling of blood with the or the stasis or stagnation of the blood in the atrium leads to the promotion of blood clots in the atrial chambers these blood clots which are present in the atrial chambers because the heart continues to beat every minute 
every second. So what happens is these small clots which are present in the atrial chambers get dislodged and potentially lead to a brain stroke. This dislodge and then they get lodged in the brain vessels. So that is called a brain stroke. So a patient with atrial fibrillation can develop a heart dysfunction, they can develop a brain stroke, they can develop a sudden reduction in the cardiac output. So these are the various complications of atrial fibrillation. Now one might ask me what are the ways in which we can detect atrial fibrillation. We have seen that if the atrial fibrillation is chronic and persistent that can easily be detected by a <coughs> ECG or an electrocardiogram. This is the simplest inexpensive test to detect the presence of atrial fibrillation. But if it is a paroxysmal atrial fibrillation that means it comes and goes then we might have to use a long term ECG recording technology to identify or diagnose or detect the presence of atrial fibrillation. So there are numerous technologies to identify atrial fibrillation on a long standing basis. Some of them are external that means we put as a patch ECG outside or we connect multiple electrodes as in the form of a Holter monitoring or we have got lot of novel devices like the Alucor where you can just touch with the finger tips of the thumb to identify atrial fibrillation. So a number of technological advances have appeared to detect the presence of atrial fibrillation. Even our Apple watch also has got an atrial fibrillation detection algorithm. So a Apple watch also can detect the presence of atrial fibrillation. Quite a few of my patients tend to identify their atrial fibrillation from their Apple watch. So you got simple technologies, you got complex technologies and the most complex technologies like where you can put a implantable loop recorder that can, that can be implanted, a small device is implanted uh, into the subcutaneous tissue that means beneath the um, beneath the skin and the uh, muscle or the fat and then this tissue, uh, this recorder will continue to record the heartbeat. So you have got the simple device like the simple technology like the ECG and a, comp a, a moderately complex technology like the uh, ECG patch or the Holter recording or a 14 day ECG patch is also available and finally for those patients where the atrial fibrillation is very rare you can put a implantable loop recorder that can last for about 2 years of the time. So what happens is if these patients tend to have one episode of atrial fibrillation which is persistent for more than 30 seconds then we can say that this patient has got an atrial fibrillation which could be paroxysmal in nature. So in conclusion lot of new technologies are there, uh, one of the easiest technologies is the Apple watch, somebody who is a patient he can use a Alucor type of a monitor if the patient is newly diagnosed or you want to confirm or make a diagnosis of atrial fibrillation you can use a Holter monitoring a patch ECG for at least 14 days. For one to diagnose atrial fibrillation at least 14 days of recording is required before we can say that this patient does not have atrial fibrillation.